today we will uh, continue our discussion about the progressive shock and this is going to be the last lecture about progressive shock and in this lecture we will basically discuss the tug of war that is going on between the negative feedback mechanisms and the positive feedback mechanisms during progressive shock so far in the progressive shock we have discussed that there are a lot of factors which keeps on progressing the shock or which basically keeps on increasing the severity of the shock or due to which the the and the shock is basically breeding more shock now the factors which we discussed they basically included all those positive feedback mechanisms which led to the formation of a vicious circle and they included the cardiac depression failure of the vasomotor center blockage of the very small vessels increased permeability of the capillaries release of toxins from the tissues release of endotoxins from the bacteria and generalized cellular deterioration from a failure of the vaso uh, sodium potassium pump etc now we discussed that these factors they basically led to the positive feedback mechanisms and they basically increased the severity of the progressive shock which is basically the second stage of shock and after which is the irreversible stage of the shock now these are something which we have discussed in detail in the previous lectures you can watch those lectures and understand properly now every shock every shock will not reach or will not develop into an irreversible stage it's because there are some negative feedback mechanisms as well which we discussed basically in the non progressive shock we discussed these negative feedback mechanisms in the non progressive shock and they basically included the baroreceptor reflexes the cns ischemic response the reverse stress relaxation the release of angiotensin formation of adh and all those mechanisms which return the blood volume towards the normal now there is a competition going on a tug of war going on between do, do these uh, positive and these negative feedback mechanisms now every progressive shock every progressive shock will not basically uh, reach the irreversible stage now depending upon the severity of the these positive feedback mechanisms and depending upon the response these negative feedback mechanisms if the severity of the shock is small or if it the shock is mild and these negative feedback mechanisms are strong if the baroreceptor response the cns ischemic response are, they, uh, these responses are good and timely they will be able to uh, they will be able to reverse the shock they will be able to reverse the shock and the shock will either uh, be in the non progressive stage or it will not progress towards the irreversible stage but if the initial shock is very high if the severity of the shock is very high then these negative feedback mechanisms they won't be able to reverse the shock they won't be able to reverse the shock and the positive feedback mechanisms will come into play the cardiac depression vasomotor failure blah 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 all these factors will come into play and they will keep on progressing the shock so it's basically a tug of war a, a competition going on between the negative feedback mechanisms or all those factors which we have discussed in detail again and again and it's a and it's basically a competition between the positive and the negative and the negative these are the positive feedback mechanisms now if these feedback mechanisms they are stronger because the severity of the shock is very high it's just like a patient has been bled for around half of his blood or more than half of his blood in an emergency and in, in an accident or a road traffic accident now the initial presentation or especially if a patient is having a cardiogenic shock in which the initial cardiac depression due to the myocardial infarction is very high then these positive feedback mechanisms will be stronger they will be stronger as compared to the negative feedback mechanisms and the patients will easily enter the vicious circle now in which a circle the the initial shock condition develops the initial shock conditions develop the cells are not receiving the uh, the adequate amount of nutrients and oxygen which leads to decrease in the uh, venous return then with uh, this leads to uh, decrease pumping of the heart and decreased cardiac output then this leads to further decrease in the arterial pressure then le this leads to basically further a decrease or inadequate supply of nutrients to the body then it leads to further decrease in the venous return which leads to further decrease in cardiac output and so on and so on until and unless death of the patient occurs so this circle basically develops this is known as the vicious circle or the vicious cycle and it develops only when the severity of the shock is so high and the shock is so much severe that the positive feedback mechanisms these mechanisms are stronger than these negative feedback mechanisms so ultimately whether a shock will revert to the non progressive and the patient will become normal or the the the, st the shock will progress towards the irreversible stage and the patient will die it depends on the severity of the shock and the 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 the, the, the role of the positive and negative feedback mechanisms if these feedback mechanisms are high then the, there is be high possibility of entering into the vicious cycle and it ultimately leads to death of the patient if these mechanisms are stronger then the patient will recover uh, and there will be no chance of going into the irreversible stage or death but this negative feedback mechanisms are stronger only when the shock is mild when the shock is mild for example a small hemorrhage has occurred and with the small hemorrhage the, the the changes in the arterial circulation can be easily recovered with these mechanisms but the chances of positive feedback mechanisms they are uh, the strong uh, the positive chances that they are more stronger than negative feedback mechanism is when the shock the initial presentation of the shock is very severe <laughs> 
severe. For example, severe myocardial infarction leading to severe cardiac depression or uh, cardiogenic shock in which the heart is initially unable to pump and the patient cannot be taken to a nearby hospital. Then these mechanisms will come into play very quickly and the patient will enter into a vicious cycle and will die. But if there is a small hemorrhage or small loss of uh, loss of small quantity of blood or plasma, then negative feedback mechanisms will be able to uh, uh, compensate and the patient will survive. So in the end, the progression of the shock basically ultimately depends uh, between the, uh, the the fight that is going on or the tug of war that is going on between the negative and the positive feedback mechanisms. Whichever side is stronger will basically win. And if this side is stronger, it will enter the patient into the vicious cycle and the patient will die. So that's all about this uh, progressive shock. In the next lecture, we will discuss the irreversible shock. Thanks a lot for watching the video.